Hey everyone, welcome to a midweek follow-up Bible study as we break down this past week's sermon, look at the chapters that we're reading throughout the week. Um, if you missed this past week's sermon, and if you weren't there in person, we did have some tech issues, we apologize about that. But we were looking at Jesus as Prince of Peace. Sar Shalom is the Hebrew wording of it. And Sar is one who has authority, is the commanding officer of. Shalom, perfect, pure peace. So Jesus is, you know, we, we talk about him as our source of peace. Yeah. And he is but it's because he's Sar Shalom, because mm. he is the authority of perfect peace. Yeah. So it's his to give. And so we just unpacked that. We wanted to make sure that we understand, you know, when we read Isaiah 9, 6, or we hear it at Christmas time, do we really understand Prince of yeah. Peace? Um, yeah. And then we've got some chapters. Before we dive into the chapters, any thoughts from the message that you wanted to break down? Uh, Not a lot. I okay. mean, yeah, I wish the, I wish we had the sermon <laughs> because it was a good sermon. It was, it was, I mean, Jordan and I were just talking about it yesterday, and she's like, man, that was such a powerful sermon. Isn't that? And so, uh, yeah. But there was just something when you define biblical peace, mm. and you said, when the Bible talks about peace, it's not peace or freedom from um, tumult or trials, but freedom in it. Yeah. And so it's not getting rid of all of the things that make your life bad, but or all of the situations that, you know, the circumstances, you know, yeah. trying to find peace outside of that. It's more finding, it's like God giving you peace in that. Yeah. And so I just thought that was a great definition of, of peace. Yeah. It's like, this yeah. is exactly. Because <laughs> it's, it's from Jesus. It's yeah. the authority figure who in mm -hmm. the middle of tribulation, you know, he says, look, in the world you will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. But in me you will have peace. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's what it is. It's the tribulation's not going anywhere. It's <laughs> peace within the tribulation. Yep. It's it's freedom from fear and anxiety and panic yeah. and worry and hopelessness within yeah. the tribulation. Yeah. It's not freedom from tribulation. Mm -hmm. It's freedom within the tribulation. Yep. That's um, good. Yeah. That's good. All right. So we've got Isaiah 26 and Isaiah 54 in the Old Testament. Yep. John 14, Romans 8, Philippians 4 in the New Testament. Let's start with Isaiah 26. A phenomenal chapter. I, I love Isaiah 26. And the message we read, Isaiah 26, 3, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he mm. trusts in you. Mm -hmm. If, you know, as you go on and read verse 4, and then it says, trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting mm. rock. Mm -hmm. And I loved how, so Isaiah 26 not only deals with Prince of Peace, but then it yeah. ties back to your sermon last week, or rather two Sundays ago, yep. on you know, another title in Isaiah 9 is Everlasting Father. Mm. And so then you get to Isaiah 26 and you see <laughs> peace and everlasting tied, tied together. together. Yeah. And you go on to Isaiah 26, in the path of your judgments, O Lord, verse 8, we wait for you. Your name and remembrance are the desire of our soul. Mm. Verse 9, my soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. Yeah. And this ties back to the sermon series on Joshua. Yep. That last that last sermon in Joshua 24 where Joshua says to the people, choose. Yeah. It's God or idols. Mm -hmm. And if it's God, then seek him with everything. Give him everything. Pursue him with everything. Mm. And so I love that it's all tied together here in Isaiah 26. Yeah. Where you've got, you have what Joshua said, and then you have what you talked about with Everlasting Father and Prince of like It's all it's interwoven. Just, just one connected yep. story. So yep. that's, that's what I love about Isaiah 26. Mm -hmm. That's what jumps out to me. Yeah. What you got? Well, I, well, for one, when I was reading that passage in uh, verse 8 and 9, or verse 9, actually, yeah. 26, my soul yearns for you in the night, my spirit within me earnestly seeks you. Mm -hmm. And I was convicted of it. Sure. Because I can't, all, I can't say honestly of my heart all the, you know, of course, we can't all say that all right. the time, but just in the particular time when I was having time with the Lord, it's like, in the, you know, does my heart earnestly seek after the Lord? Like this idea of like, this is the number one thing my heart seeks and wants. Yeah, wants. Wants. Like not this doing is, it out of yeah. obligation, but yeah. I wake up and the desire on my heart mm -hmm. is the Lord. Is to be with the Lord and know the Lord and, and grow my relationship. You know what I mean? And so it was a great 
conviction that the Lord was giving to me. But yeah. then what jumped out at me is later on in verse 12, where he says, Oh Lord, you ordain peace mm. for us, for you have indeed done for us all our works. Mm. And that like God gave the conviction. Okay, Lord, like, yeah, I, man, it's like, I don't always, you know, have the, the heart that earnestly seeks after you, but you have done all the work and made everything possible for me to be able to have that heart yeah. in Christ. You ordain peace. I just That's love good. the word ordain. Like yeah. he has established peace. Yeah. yeah, he has established it. it mm -hmm. And then it goes to what was one of the themes of Joshua, that God fights for his people, yeah. that he is the one who, who wins the battles. Yeah. Verse 12, you have indeed done for us all our works. Yes. Like just a great, <laughs> yes. great connection. Yes. So that's Isaiah 26. That's what stood out to mm -hmm. us. We'd love to hear from you guys what stood out to you of Isaiah 26. Please put it in the comments. Please. Uh, <laughs> no joke. No joke. <laughs> We're serious. Isaiah 54, uh, the, next, the next part of our mm -hmm. Old Testament reading this week. Just so many incredible chapter or chap verses in this chapter. Uh, yeah. Second half of verse eight: With everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, mm. your Redeemer. I mean, that half is exactly what you were just talking about, right? Mm. Like your Redeemer, who's yeah. the one who redeems us? God. The yeah. redemption work is His, right? Mm. Everlasting love. What did you preach on two Sundays ago? <laughs> everlasting Father. Yeah. Then you drop down to 10. For the mountains may depart, the hills may be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. My covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Mm. So now you again have peace. Yep. But what do we have? My steadfast love will not be removed. My covenant, yeah. I will uphold my part. Yeah. Made me think of your sermon from Joshua 21 on the mm. faithfulness of God and the unchanging nature of who God is. <laughs> and so it, these chapters are just beautiful to me. Yeah because it's just further education and instruction on this is who God has always mm. been. This is who God is. This is who God always will be. Yeah. And, and I love just the, the word you used earlier, interwoven, right? Just this inextricable nature of God's faithfulness and mm. his love and his covenant of peace. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about in verse 12, I have ordained peace for you, mm. right? Then we yeah. jump down to verse 17 and 54. Yeah. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. You shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of mm. the servants of the Lord, their vindication from me. That's a good verse. Oh, it's such a good, like, <laughs> this is the verse. heritage. Yeah. This is, yeah. and so it goes back to a point I made in the sermon Sunday when people are like, well, I'm not a peaceful person. You know, I'm just, I'm yeah. not just a peaceful person. It's like, are you a child of God? Mm hmm. Are you indwelt with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> then this is your heritage. This is the power in you. Yeah. So the question isn't, am I a peaceful person? The question is, am I abiding in the peace that I have access to, that I have been given? Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's really my man. 60 seconds on Isaiah 54, which is probably like three <laughs> minutes, but. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. What you got? It was good though, because I think the, the verse that you, uh, said so verse 10 the mountains may depart the mm -hmm. hills may be removed but my steadfast love shall not depart from you for my covenant and peace shall be not be removed right mm -hmm. it's a beautiful verse and it's like but how can I know mm -hmm. that this will not be removed well he says it in the verse before he says as in the days of Noah this is this yeah. is how it is for me in the days of Noah as I swore that the waters would never go over the earth again Th with that certainty of him being able to keep that promise is the same certainty that he has that our peace will not be removed. Mm. And so it's like, if I need proof, I mean, I just, when it's flooding outside, it stops. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's my proof. That's, yeah. <laughs> and so we've tied it to Joshua, and now you're like, man, shoot, God ties it even further back than Joshua. Oh, yeah. Which again goes to, this is who he's always been. This is who we always will it's be. It's tying into what we, I mean, oh, it's great. the youth group is going through Genesis. We just read through that. Oh, it's so good. So it's like, youth, if you're listening, hey, look at that. Parents, if you're yes. watching, go ask your youth about the lessons of Noah. Oh, there you go. tied into this, right? Like, boom. That's, that's some real family, interval. <laughs> family dynamic teaching going. Um, all right, so that's Isaiah 26, Isaiah 54. Then we jump ahead to the New Testament. Then you come to John 14, this incredible chapter. Jesus' last moments with the disciples before, you know, the next, really the next event after this room is the Garden of Gethsemane, mm. his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion. 
So yeah. things are about to get terrible for the disciples. Their life is about to be thrown into massive amounts of chaos and, and tumultuous yeah. times. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is talking about, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And, you know, in, in, four, in 14, um, we talked about he promises the Holy Spirit. Yep. You know, we looked at specifically 1427, like peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. We really broke mm. that down in the sermon. But as I was rereading 14 this week, Verse one stood out to me. Yeah. And it says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Mm. And it goes to what we looked at in Isaiah, what we, we looked at in the message Sunday. You know, let not your hearts be troubled. What is that directly connected to? Mm. Our belief in God and Jesus. Wow. Like our, our faith in mm -hmm. who they are. Yeah. Is what allows our hearts to not be troubled. And so I just, mm -hmm. I really loved how Jesus put those two points side by side. Like, let not your hearts be troubled. Yeah. What's the alternative? Belief. Man. And so oh. I think we got to be honest that when we allow our hearts yeah. to be troubling or troubled, we are simultaneously saying, I do not believe you, God, at your word. Like, Jesus, That's... I do not believe what you say. That's tough. <laughs> I, I mean, Jesus says, he's like, look, do not let your hearts be troubled. Yeah. The alternative to that, yeah. believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. So if I am choosing to be troubled, I have to admit that I am simultaneously choosing to not take Jesus seriously at his word. <laughs> and that's why this is such a huge it's huge matter for the Christian to understand. Yeah. I mean it ties into even what we're going to end up talking about like in Romans and Philippians. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's just such I mean that's convicting. It is. It hits, it's like, it hits me hard. And it if we're not honest enough to say Jesus, I just don't know if I believe you right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's not going to shoo us away and be like, oh, well, guess what? You yeah. are, <laughs> you're done. You're, you're done. cut off. No, no it's not going to happen. He's not going to do that. So we can be honest enough to say, like, you know what? Like, I just don't, I'm reading it, but mm -hmm. I don't believe it. And that's just the reality. And that's why I'm not experiencing this peace. Okay, Lord, how can I get to a place where I do believe it? I think that's one of the most powerful cries out to Jesus that we mm -hmm. see in the New Testament when it's, it's the Roman centurion, not the Roman centurion, but it's someone comes to him with a sick child, a father, a father comes to Jesus yeah. with a sick child and he cries out to him. He says, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Oh yeah. I, yeah, think, yeah. I think that's yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. most beautifully just broken, vulnerable yeah. moments before Jesus. Yeah. And we see that Jesus comes through. Why? Oh, yeah. Because scripture shows that that's who Jesus is. And it wasn't like, you know, just to go on that point a little bit, Further, it wasn't even that he was, he didn't have any belief at all. Right. He says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. It's like, it's not enough. I need more. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what jumps out to me, John 14. Yeah. How yep. about any thoughts, John 14, any particular points? Uh, you know, for me, um, you know, what you're saying, I, I think that is just, it's really profound, convicting, good, encouraging, you know, just, man, I just, I'm going to be thinking about it a lot. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he says in verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. You know, that you use that in your sermon and he used it really well to illustrate like this is Jesus's, like he is the chief commander. Like he has authority to give this peace. Yeah. The only one. The no one else has not. authority to give peace yep. because he's the author of it. He's the commander of it. He's the Factor God of, of it. it. Yep. Like he's all of it. But at this point, Jesus is leaving. Yeah. You know, he's about to leave. He's about to leave his disciples. And so, he, but he's saying, I'm leaving, but I'm, I'm going to leave my peace with you. He's the commander in chief and he's leaving. So how is his peace going to be with them if he's gone? And he tells them, that, you know, in verses before, I'm going to send you a helper. Holy and it's just Spirit. this beautiful Trinitarian, mm. like the spirit yeah. is also peace yeah, because he's God. And I'm going to give him so to you. And he's not just going to be with you. He's going to be in you. Yeah. So there is even more. Like Always. I'm not a peaceful, peaceful person. Like, you you have it inside. You well with the peace of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So that's, that's what stood out to me. Cool. But... Um, Okay, so then we jump to Romans 8, smack in the middle of just an incredible stretch of chapters. Romans 6, 7, 8, 9 are, uh -huh. are just incredible chapters. And in the middle of that, you find Romans 8 talking about life in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we looked at some of the later verses, like 
31, 32, 33. Yep. But in rereading it, what jumped out to me is uh, Romans 8, 6, to set the mind on the flesh is death, yes. but to set the mind on the spirit is life mm-hmm. and peace. That was something that we looked at. And then really the whole second half of the sermon was, all right, if this is the peace that Jesus provides. You know, this is what we have access to. Mm-hmm. This is what we've been given. So how do we how do we abide in that? Well, we abide in the mind of Christ. We looked at mm-hmm. Corinthians where it talks about we have the mind of Christ. Uh, in Second Corinthians, it says mm-hmm. so we take every cap, we take every thought captive yeah. mm-hmm. to obey Christ. And so I was talking with somebody um, this week a- about the sermon, and they were like, mm-hmm. "Okay, so you know, Sunday you gave us the big unpacking of mm-hmm. abiding in Christ and the mm-hmm. peace of Christ." Give me like a three second definition of what does it mean to abide mm. in the peace of Christ? Yeah. And I said, to think on Jesus and to think like Jesus, mm. right? Like I yeah. think like him and I think about him. And, yeah. and that's Romans that's 8, good. 6, to set the mind on the spirit yeah. is life and peace. And so I think wow. that one verse could really just be the distillation of, of yeah. all of this. Yeah, it sums it all up. Yeah. I love that Paul is, at least in this that passage, speaking of the mind, mm-hmm. like your definition, to think on Jesus, you know? And because I think that, and I've experienced this in my walk with Jesus and with community, you know, Christians and things and churches, is there can be sometimes this kind of like, I, I don't know, like the mind, you know. Oh, de-emphasis the, of the intellect. Yeah, de-emphasis is a great word. So it's like, if you're thinking, if you are thinking too much about something, or if you're thinking a lot about something, you, you, it's kind of showing your lack of faith. Uh, okay, so slight shift. We had a <laughs> camera die. Uh, this is just our week for tech. Um, yeah, it's just... So we had to rearrange quickly, but you were in the mm-hmm. middle of a great thought on yep. the de-emphasis of intellect and yeah. Romans 8 really yeah. contradicts that. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, just like his emphasis on the mind and how sometimes we could think, oh, if I'm thinking too much, if I'm, mm-hmm. you know, thinking or pondering too much on certain things, I'm, it's like a lack of faith. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're thinking too much, you're too much in your head, you know, you just need faith or whatever, which, you know, I'm not saying... You, we can do that, but you the problem can, isn't. Yeah. The problem isn't with thinking. Yes. It's with thinking on the wrong things. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, what, like <laughs> he, he says, to set the mind on the flesh is death, mm-hmm. but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Yeah. So Paul, I mean, explicitly states the problem isn't setting your mm-hmm. mind on something. Yeah. It's so, setting your mind on the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's like me saying, like, oh, I've got terrible health issues because of food. The issue is food entirely. I'm going to stop mm. eating. And the doctor's like, no, start eating fruits and vegetables. <laughs> stop eating four Big Macs. Like, what do you eat? Well, I eat four Big Macs for every meal. Like three <laughs> meals a day, four Big Macs, 12 by the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, Sam, the problem is not eating. Yeah. The problem is what you're eating. There you go. Right? Yeah. Like Paul's like, that's a good way of saying The it. problem is not setting your mind on something. Mm-hmm. It's setting your mind on the wrong thing. So the problem is not intellectual pursuit. Yep or intellectual engagement, mm-hmm. the problem is intellectual engagement and intellectual pursuit of not Jesus, mm. of not the spirit. Yep, that's a great way. <laughs> Look at you, pastor, <laughs> <laughs> the analogies. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I, I just thought it was great that he emphasized on the mind because it's a very important piece. Yeah. And you know, I think A.B. Simpson even wrote part of how like, I think a lot of times when we think of sanctification, we think of our heart, mm-hmm. we think of our body. But we often forget that God wants to sanctify our mind. Yeah. Oh, too. yeah. Absolutely. He wants to renew it. So, yeah, that's, you know. Yeah. It, Romans, I mean, really, man, Romans 8 is such a rich. We could do yeah. a three hour video on. You just really can. Verse by verse through Romans 8. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot to unpack there. Even, you, you know, you look at set the mind on the spirit is life. And yeah. then you go on to yeah. verses 29 through 33. Who can condemn? Who can you know, bring a charge against us. We've been justified. Like Mm -hmm. in the courtroom of eternity, Mm -hmm. we can't get a death sentence. Yeah. Right. Like to set the mind on the spirit is love. (laughs) And so I just, I love it. Yeah. Um, And then we come to Philippians four, last chapter of the week. 
We read verses six through nine in the sermon on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I wanted to draw attention to what stood out to me as I was rereading Philippians four is mm -hmm. verse four, yeah, where it says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." Again, I will say, rejoice. And then you know, let your reasonable listening known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Mm. And so once again, you have this just stark contrast mm. of of two things to set our minds and our efforts yeah. to right, like. Mm. Don't be anxious about anything. Why? Because you are preoccupied with rejoicing in the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, like a mind that is a mind that is devoted to worshiping and rejoicing in God, yeah, naturally automatically does not have time to spend being anxious about things. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. No, my mind is set on worshiping mm -hmm. God. My mind is set on rejoicing. Mm -hmm. That's where my focus is. Yep. So naturally, there's not going to be as much space and room yeah. for me to be anxious about things yeah. and, to, and to, to not be at peace with things. Yeah, I think that that's... <laughs> I mean, because we, we apply it to everything yeah. else. It's like, naturally, if I fill the jar up with water, yep. I'm not going to have enough space to put other stuff. Yeah. You know? Like, this water bottle is mm -hmm. half full of water. And so if I added another liquid to it, mm -hmm. well, it's still only going to be half full of this other liquid yeah. because half of this space is already taken up by water. Mm -hmm. So if I were to fill this all the way up to the top with water, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, well, now I'm going to add milk to it. Well, you can't because it's totally full of water. Yeah. If my mind is totally full of rejoicing in the Lord and worshiping in it, there's just not space for the other stuff. Yeah, no space. And I love that in your sermon you mentioned, you know, you're not talking about mental health mm -hmm. diagnosed you Panic know, attacks are real. Yeah. Anxiety is real. Those medical depression is real. Like, yeah, absolutely. Take mental health seriously. Yeah. Take counseling seriously. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the emotional reaction to tribulation yeah. of life. The soul level. The soul level. Yeah, of, yeah. Of oh, things. that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. The soul level. The, yeah. The heart level. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think that was good. Uh, for Philippians, yeah, just uh, just a little thing stuck out to me in the way that like Paul def. Uh, personifies peace. Oh, okay. And he, uh, where is this at? This is in verse, uh, so six says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything and in prayer, by prayer supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Oh, verse mm. seven, he says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts. That's cool. And your mind. So your heart and your mind. And your mind. mind. You can't separate the two. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so on the soul level, God, the God of peace will guard, peace will guard your heart and your mind. But this idea of like a guard of like, you know, you say the commander That's in chief cool. and it's, it's like him, it's like he's giving you peace, but he's also guarding your mind, your heart from the, this is why we could be not anxious about things. Yeah. Why we can't work because he's guarding That's our minds, cool. our hearts from you know, I just thought it was a nice little... That's a great a imagery. Picture. Just this, I mean, just jacked guard, right? <laughs> and it's like, oh, what's that guarding my heart and mind? Oh, that's Jesus' peace. Right? Yeah. It's that's Jesus. cool. That's Jesus. That is that is Jesus. Commander. As commander as Sar Shalom yeah. guarding my heart and mind. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's um, and it goes right to, you know, arguably the most famous verse in Philippians 4, Philippians 4, 13, I yes. do all things through Christ who strengthens me, mm -hmm. which comes right after. He's like, look, regardless of my situation, mm. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm content. Mm -hmm. I'm at peace. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of God who strengthens me. And it's it's just a, a tie up yeah. to all of this. Which I think is good because we take that out of context a lot. Oh, yeah. And it's like this, he's talking about in life's chaotic moments, mm -hmm. I can still be at peace. Yep. Not, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to get. I can make it. jokes about this verse taken out of context. You know, I find yeah. the right grocery at the store. I find the right grocery at the store. <laughs> I can do all things. I get that front row parking spot. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, real quick, <laughs> can of worms just cracking open. Did you ever hear the Joel Osteen sermon, which is all about God wants you to have that front row at the parking at Walmart? No, but I can just he, already. See he talks about. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can get that front row parking spot at Walmart. And uh, I came very close to breaking my laptop screen when somebody sent me that clip. And I was just like, hmm? I'm like, so yes, yes, in context, beautiful <laughs> verse about peace. I will, I'll put the can lid back down. There we go. We'll, we'll keep just, the worms. Yeah. Just know this is a lot deeper than finding a parking spot. A lot deeper, a lot more meaningful, a lot more eternally significant. Um, 
But yeah, so those any other thoughts on Isaiah, John, Romans, Philippians? No, I think we hashed it out. Yeah, we pretty good. Thanks everyone for joining us. As always, we'd love to hear from you. We really mean that. Um, hope you're having a great week. If there are any questions you have about these passages, send them our way. You know, we'd love to, to have that conversation as well, but we'll see you all Sunday. Hey everyone, Pastor Sam here. Thanks for joining us for another midweek Bible study video. If you didn't see the sermon that we were talking about, you can find it here. Or if you're interested in more of these midweek Bible study videos and thoughts as Pastor Mario and I break things down, you can find that here as well. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all our content. Thanks for joining us.